Hey, St. Paul's, it's Charlie. Uh, I am here with you from my dining room slash living room. And the sun is actually setting right in front of my face. So um, we're gonna do evening prayer tonight. And uh, I just felt like it was time to connect with you and uh, pray with you and be with you, if only uh, uh, virtually in this way. Um, just a few updates. Your uh, staff met this morning and we're developing a lot of ways to connect with you. Uh, that should be out soon on uh, coming up on Grace Street, either today or tomorrow. You can hear about ways that we're gonna um, uh, try to stay connected and to grow and to pray during this Lenten season. Of course, you'll also learn in that coming up on Grace Street that uh, uh, Bishop Goff has announced that um, she's suspending all uh, public worship uh, through Easter. So yes, that means uh, no Holy Week services or no Easter Day services at St. Paul's um, or anywhere in the Diocese of Virginia, but a lot of churches are doing the same thing, and I know that's really disappointing, but we are going to work hard to uh, make sure we that we still uh, live into the spirit of this season. Uh, so again, stay tuned for information about that. To the best of my knowledge, uh, everybody at St. Paul's is doing okay. Um, nobody's health has been directly affected by the virus, and that's good news. Again, we give thanks for that. Today is the feast day of St. Joseph, the feast of St. Joseph. So we'll um, celebrate the feast of St. Joseph today as we move through evening prayer. Uh, you can find evening prayer uh, beginning on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer, 115. And if you don't have a prayer book, that's totally fine. No big deal. Uh, you can just kind of sit back and I will carry you through the service. So let's begin with just a few deep breaths and just find ourselves wherever we are. Uh, know that that's where you need to be and remind ourselves of God's presence. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel or sit or stand in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And together we pray, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And on page 118, we'll say together, O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening 
is Psalm 89. 89. It's a portion of Psalm 89 on page 713. Page 713. And we will read verses 1 through 9. 1 through 9 in unison. Psalm 89, verses 1 through 9. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts, O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we'll now turn to our readings. And um, as I say, the, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph. So this is a reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. Now every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. Jesus said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So just a few words about this uh, passage. Uh, this is in the second chapter. And it is pretty early on um, after the birth narrative, and we don't have a whole lot about Jesus and his childhood. And here it just kind of cuts off after that. Um, and then we, after this, we get to, um, to, to John the Baptist. Um, but I, I like this passage, especially for where we are right now. I've been thinking, like, what does this passage have to do with, with today, our particular uh, strange context and um, what it says to me is that even uh, the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, uh, dealt with, um, they had to exist in ordinary times. And while I don't think now is ordinary, all of us are at home. We are trying to establish new patterns. We are trying to establish new rhythms. Um, we may be all together for the first time um, in a long time as a family, as our kids come home, and as we try to establish new routines. Um, and this makes me think that even Joseph and Mary didn't really kind of get it all right the first time, even as, as parents trying to raise a teenager. 
I mean, after all, they lost their kid. <laughs> and it was Jesus. They lost Jesus. Um, and that gives me a little bit of hope. Because that says that if Joseph and if Mary can uh, just, you know, not get it all right, then that must mean that, that I'll be okay, too. And that even uh, God's presence is with me if I don't happen and manage to uh, hit it out of the park every time, especially as we try to settle into this new season and this new rhythm um, all around us. God is going to be present. And the reality is that Jesus still, he was okay. Uh, they found him. He still continued to be Jesus. He grew. And scripture tells us that Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. So as we move through the night and through the week, uh, may we think about uh, the parents. May we think about families. And may we think about how God is present as we try to do our very best to um, incarnate Christ and to be a living reflection of Christ, even in these uncertain times. So let's say together now the Magnificat, which is traditionally the uh, canticle of Mary said after the gospel. Page 119 in the prayer book. Remember, this is the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son, and the spouse of his virgin mother. Give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Are there other prayers that we need to lift up? I think there's a dog next door that <laughs> wants to come in. Sorry about that. We pray for all physicians, for nurses, for those managing this crisis, for their patience, their attentiveness. For all who are sick and suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and our petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Take care, St. Paul's. And to all of you who are watching, thanks for joining. God bless you. May you be blessed and may you be a blessing to others.